Mr. Richard Bevan! Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name's Richard. Uh, I'm an animal ecophysiologist. Now, I know that sort of sounds great to start with. I'm an animal. But when I add sort of ecophysiology, it, 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 it loses a bit. <laughs> um, what I essentially do is I study animals and how they work, not in the lab, but in the wild. And to some people, that's really glamorous. It's really exotic. I go to exotic places, exciting places. I study exotic and exciting animals. And it sounds idyllic, but it isn't. And the clue to why it isn't is in, that, is in the phrase, I work with wild animals. <laughs> because everyone who works with wild animals know that they are the devil's disciples. Okay? <laughs> I'll give you an example. One of the areas I, I work in is Antarctica. Ooh. And, uh, but not really Antarctica, it's sub-Antarctic. But it's probably one of the most remote places you come to. It's a little island called Bird Island that is off the coast of South Georgia. So the nearest civilization if you can call it that, it's the Falkland Islands, 500 miles away, across the most barren um, uh, oceans in the world. On this little island, there are about 2 million seabirds and about 100,000 seals and six of us. <laughs> okay? So we are seriously outnumbered by the animals, <laughs> and they know it. <laughs> now, 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 some of them, some of them, they're quite okay about it. The, 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 the king penguins, they're quite cool about it. And in case you don't know <laughs> what they look like, brought <laughs> one along with me. Okay, I'll put that there. Uh, <clears throat> few, but they're not the brightest of birds. So if you go on a beach, just stand there. Stand there. Just sit, stand there. Don't do anything else. After a while, king penguins standing over here. <laughs> look at you. you go. <laughs> and the friends will come along until you're standing there having done nothing at all and you've got 50 to 100 penguins and all around there and all looking at each other going what are you doing here? <laughs> I don't know, he started it. <laughs> uh, not all of them are quite as accommodating as the, the, the penguins, though. Uh, some of them are really affronted by the fact that you've had the audacity to come into their uh, territory. For example, the brown skewer. Brown skewer, little bird, well, not a little bird, it's quite a medium-sized bird. And you walk along, and you put your foot into its territory. What it does then, immediately it leaves its nest, flies around, gets a lot of speed up, and then dives bomb, dive bombs you from behind and hits you in the back of the head. Right, and they just keep doing that. And then there are the seals, the Antarctic fur seals. Now, there's 100,000 of these, and they are two, they're a bit like bodybuilders. They're about 200, 250 kilograms of muscle, testosterone-fueled teeth. <laughs> Right, sort of, and, and they've got three things on their mind. Sex. More sex. And a bloody good fight. <laughs> right, so that, that, that's their life, really. Sort of, and it doesn't matter what's there, they'll fight it. So if an elephant seal comes along, you know, ten times its size, weighs a ton, they go, I'm having you. <laughs> and they will. <laughs> elephant seal doesn't have a chance. And they take on anything. They look down, see the reflection, the put puddle, bang! <laughs> a driftwood comes up, it's splintered. But most of the time, they keep their eye out for us. And that means sort of whenever you go out, you have to be looking wherever you are, sort of, uh, uh, because they will just look at you and it may be half a kilometre away. And you can see its head come up. I'm having you. <laughs> and you can just about get faster than they are. I mean, but all those animals pale into insignificance when it comes to another animal. An animal called the giant petrel. Right? This, the, the adult's about the same size as a turkey. Okay? But it makes a turkey look like an avian supermodel. 
<laughs> it is ugly. It is, it is revolting. It's, it looks revolting, it smells revolting, and it has the most revolting behaviours you can think of. Right? Because these animals are, are like the vultures of the Southern Ocean. And what they do is they clear up all the seal carcasses who died in the fights. Okay? And they do so by feeding on them, by going up through the bottom of the dead carcasses and eating them from the inside. Like, really horrible, horrible things. But the chicks are worse. <laughs> That's it. So, if you haven't seen a giant petrol chick, I've got one. Go. Now, you may think that that is a mop, but stick a beak on that, and that is a very, very... Uh, well-groomed uh, giant petrol chip. There you go. Now, the thing about giant petrol chips is, uh, and I need a bit of audience participation here. Now. But say we want to catch this giant petrol chip, but that's easy, right? Because it's not going in. Right? It can't. It can't walk. All it can do is sit in its nest and it sits there. Right? So it sits there. Right. I need your help here. Okay. I want you all to go say the word black. What? But block. Like that. Okay? Black. 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 Now, as we get closer, we need to do it a bit faster. Right? So we do black here, black, black here. And when I get over to there, go black, 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 and give a little wiggle as well. Okay? <laughs> the little wiggle is really, really important. Okay? Let, let us try it. So. At that point, you run as fast as you possibly can, even if it's in straight into the mouth of a testosterone fueled seal. You run because if you get bitten by a seal, you get better. What the giant petrol chip has is chemical weapons. Okay, now if you imagine, get close to this now, its defense mechanism is to vomit. <laughs> now, vomit in you, sort of, you think, oh, well, yeah, that's not very, you know, it's a bit unpleasant, but that's not too bad. I think this is industrial strength vomit now. <laughs> this is vomit that has been made from the rotting carcasses of seals. That's been stewed for a good few days until it's a real fermenting mess, with a bit of sort of dead fish thrown in as a bit like. And where is sort of normal vomit that you can wash away? That stuff doesn't sort of stay with you for an hour or two, or a couple of days. But weeks and months later, you still smell of the vomit that comes from that. And if you're on an island and there's only five of you, or six of you, you've only got five friends, you don't want to spend that rest of the, the three months that you're on there sitting in the jenny shed, having your food pushed through the door. <laughs> I mean, one of the things about sort of living on these, these islands, they're remote and there's only a couple of you there, and so you try to make it nice for you, yourself. So uh, to do that, you, you, you take along lots of alcohol. <laughs> right, sort of, uh, I, I know they're talking about binge drinking sort of earlier, sort of, but uh, uh, we take it to another level, really. Uh, you go down with as much alcohol as you can possibly carry, or the ship can carry anyway, uh, and you have loads of it gallons of the stuff. And you think you're the only one who's going to take it down. Uh, but everyone does. And so we, we had so much gin at one point, we were sending specimens back to the UK preserved in the stuff. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so uh, we, 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 we drank a little bit. And one Christmas Eve, we decided that we'd have a drinking game uh, that really just entailed drinking. <laughs> but I thought, what, what, what should we drink today? But, uh, well, it's Christmas Eve, let's have something special. So we had tequila and moe and chandon slammers. <laughs> right, sort of, and we spent the whole night sort of basically sort of doing that until we couldn't lift anything. Right, sort of, uh, and, and that was great until the morning. Now I don't know about you, but I get a really bad hangover with tequila. And I get a really bad hangover with champagne. The two of them together, and I was I was wasted. It was the worst hangover I've ever had in my life. And so I thought, this is Christmas morning. I, I, you know, we've got Christmas dinner sort of later on. I've got to get better. You know, so I've got to get myself there. Okay, so I, I, I'll go for a walk. I'll go to that little, little bit over there that I've never been to before. 
and I walked out and avoided the seals. And I was walking along and the sun was shining, it was nice and cool, there was a cool breeze, and I was feeling a little bit better. And that's when the skewer hit me in the back of the head. And I went down like a sack of potatoes. Bang! Knocked out completely and utterly. I'm lying there on the ground. And I look to my side and I realise that the skewer has mistimed it as well. Because he's lying on the floor and he's going... <laughs> <laughs> and I notice he legs it that way. Because as fast as he can. And I go, oh, right, okay. And I think I better get up, better get up. All right. So I push myself up, push myself up. And that's when I realise that sitting in front of me is a giant petrol chip that goes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>